this thing. Let us start with divine blessings. To the Supreme God, Divine Father, Mother, Guru, Master, Chokrutsu, Mahabhuni, Mary, all the great, great ones, Holy Gurus, Holy Masters, Saints, Archangels, Holy Angels, Spiritual Helpers, all divine helpers, invisible helpers, Lords of Karma, Buddha Kuala, Buddha Shakti, all Bodhisattvas, all beings of light, our divine self and higher soul. We humbly invoke for your divine blessings, divine light, divine love, and divine power, the divine peace, illumination, mercy, forgiveness, the divine help, divine support, divine healing, physical and inner people. We invoke to you, God, for your miraculous blessings and gifts to your divine grace, the gift of life, the gift of breathing, seeing, eating, sensing, feeling, hearing, touching, that we are still alive, God, that itself is a great gift of yours. We are so blessed that in the worst of calamities, in the worst of all that is going on all over the world, we are still safe and sound. Our family members are safe. We all are secured. We all are happy. We all are able to serve people, to help people, to cater to them. Thank you, God, for all your blessings, all your healings, all your support, all your divine protection. Thank you for divinely protecting us, our family members, our loved ones, all our possessions, our belongings, all our dreams, desires, wishes, goals, all our life purpose, greatness, and manifestations. We are all spiritually one, spiritually one, spiritually one. We are one with God and one with all. Our hearts are one, our souls are one. We are one. We belong to you, God. We belong to everything that is there in the universe. We are one, we are one, we are one. Just get in touch with your own inner self, the God within you. I am that I am. I am not the body, I am not the emotions, I am not the thoughts, I am not the mind. The mind is just an instrument of the soul. I am the soul. I am a being of pure energy and light. I am in complete and permanent control over my body, my emotions and my thoughts. So be it. I am super receptive, super conducting, and super, super grateful to the divine blessings, healings, and miracles coming from you, God, passing through you, our Sadhguru. I am super receptive, super conducting, and super, super grateful. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, God. Thank you, my Guru. Thank you in full faith with lots of gratitude, respect, and lots of love. We thank you. Visualize. Uh, <clears throat> you're looking at self in the mirror, and you see as you look into your eyes, a bright light within. That is the higher soul, the speck of God, from which we came into the body from which we possess this body. Visualize a bright golden lotus shining above your head, above your crown. That is the incarnated soul or the speck of God that is within the body, within and outside the body. Let us forgive ourselves for all the mistakes we have done in all our lifetimes, especially in this lifetime. Atma Namaste. 
आज सुन आई सल्यूट द डिविनिटी विद यू आज सुन आई सल्यूट द आत्मा विद यू आज सुन आई सल्यूट द गॉड विद यू द क्राइस्ट विद यू द अल्लाह विद यू वी आर बोथ चिल्ड्रन ऑफ गॉड वी आर बोथ इवॉल्विंग वी बोथ हैव डन मिस्टेक्स I forgive you for all the mistakes you have done to me on all levels through time and space. I release you from all negative karmic connections, thoughts, and bonds. May both you and I be completely and permanently healed on all levels through time and space. I love you I care for you I embrace you with love I accept you unconditionally no matter what mistakes you have done in the past I still love you and accept you unconditionally I am part of you and you are part of me it's okay to do mistakes no matter what mistakes you or I have done I completely and permanently forgive you for all the mistakes you have done. So visualize a little baby that is the inner child within you. Forgive this inner child. The child has done mistakes. So let us forgive and embrace and love and accept this inner child of ours. I love you no matter what you are. I love you unconditionally. We are one. We are one. We are one. You are mine and I am yours. I love you. Now visualize both these two lights merging with each other. And <clears throat> and let this light go up to the sun from where you can see the solar system you can see specks of light stars and stardust all around the universe with small specks of light on mother earth these lights are the soul light of every living human being Atmanam is paid to all sentient beings in all eight directions above and below in all parallel universes and in all dimensions and in all times past present and future i the soul i forgive you all for all the mistakes you have done to me on all levels through time and space i humbly seek your forgiveness for all the mistakes i have done to any of you to all of you on all levels of time and space please forgive me may only love peace and harmony be between you and me i release you from all negative karmic connections thoughts bonds may both you and i be completely and permanently healed on all levels through time and space may lord parabrahman's blessings be with you and me may whatever is best for you come to you and to me om shanti 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 om om amen amen now disconnect cut all the negative energy cords with these souls who have hurt you in the past or you have hurt them like a, a knife cut all those energy cords cut 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 visualize gray cloudy smoke going out of your body of your energy body of your aura these are all the dumped energies of those souls who have hurt you all those pains trauma suffering all those you know jealousy hatred anger whatever they have thrown towards you they are all dumped in your chakras in your meridians in your aura so just release all of them 
as you're releasing, your inner light is has started shining bright. It's been brighter and brighter. You, you can see it radiating now. Now, since we have forgiven, we are entitled to be forgiven by God. Lord God, the Lords of Karma and Lord Parabrahman, we humbly invoke to you for your forgiveness and mercy. Thank you for forgiving me on all levels, physically, energetically, emotionally, mentally, spiritually, financially, or socially, in this relationship also. Thank you for forgiving me on all levels through time and space. So through time is in the past, present, and in the future also. The suffering that I'm supposed to go through in the future, let God forgive me now so that even in the future, I am not, I don't go through those sufferings. And through space, so no matter where I am, whether, whether I am in India, whether I am in US, whether I am on Mother Earth, whether I am on any other planet, wherever I am, God, I am so grateful that you have forgiven me completely and permanently. Thank you for healing my life completely and permanently on all levels through time and space. Thank you for neutralizing all my karmas even before they mature. Thank you for blessing me with a healed, wholesome life on all levels. Wholesome experiences, wholesome situations in my Thank you for your divine blessings. Thank you for blessing me with abundance, prosperity, material and financial. Abundance in every area of my life. Thank you for blessing me with progress, success, growth, manifestation of my greatness. I was born to do something great. Thank you for manifesting it. Thank you for materializing all my wishes, dreams, desires, especially my wish for the day. Make a wish. Thank you for materializing all my Kriya Shaktis. Kriya Shaktis are, this is uh, what you have done uh, to materialize your dreams. There is a technique in your country school. When you become a hatha, you can learn that. So when you learn, you know how to fulfill your dreams. Thank you, God, for everything. I'm doing so great. So be it. So be it. So it is. Om. Amen. Amen. Tathastu, tathastu, tathastu. So it is. Amen. Let us chant Om and Aum alternatively. Om is to raise our vibrations for the day and Aum is to bring down the divine healing energies from the universe. Right? So let us do it together. Om. Center, center yourself. Feel the stillness within you. Inhale the peace. 
exhale all your tensions, worries, trauma, anxiety. Inhale the peace. Inhale the contentment, the bliss, the stillness. Exhale all your anger, irritation, intolerance, resentment. Inhale the blessings of God, God's unconditional love and forgiveness. And exhale your gratitude and humility. When you're comfortable, you may open your eyes. Okay, once again. So, you know, yesterday I received a call and uh, somebody was asking me about the pandemic. Um, you know, why uh, the question was that uh, there are people who are saying, uh, you know, you just uh, chant this, uh, write this number on your left side of the body and your body will be, it will develop immunity and, uh, you know, you will not have COVID. So he was asking me whether this is true or not. So I explained the way I understand. I said, look, there are clothes available in the uh, market, but they are in different sizes, different shapes, different colors, different designs. When we go to a shop, we don't just pick up what is uh, you know, there in the front. What we do, we choose the color, the design, the shape. We choose the size. So maybe even if the shopkeeper is saying, oh, madam, ye bohat bikta hai. this is of high demand, take this. And you see that it is of Excel size, whereas you need a medium size or a small size. You will not just blindly pick up what he is offering you, right? You will see whether it suits you or not. There comes the question of using our intelligence. Intelligence is given by Brahma, divine light. We know when we did the session on divine light, love and power, you remember Brahma, Vishnu, Mahesh. Brahma is the intelligence aspect of God that we have within us. The creative aspect, the intelligence aspect. So when God has given us intelligence, it is not for us to keep it dormant in our brains and just blindly follow what people are saying. We must rationalize. We must experiment, experience, validate. We must validate. We must use our practical, realistic approach towards this. What this person is saying, is it right? For example, just give me an example. That it is said that, you know, turmeric is very good for health. Multiple aspects it takes care of the physical body. It also boosts the immunity. So it's good. Even I uh, give my children, you know, turmeric uh, paste with milk in the morning. But suppose somebody has allergy. And just because you have been suggested, you just blindly do it. It might harm your body. So whenever somebody is saying that, okay, you chant this mantra, you chant this, uh, you know, um, you write this number on the left side of your body and you will see you will never get COVID. Don't just blindly follow. Saints, all sadhus, you will see when they are meditating, they are sitting in a, um, in the Padmasan, uh, you know, this thing posture and they are putting their hands like this. Chin mudra, we say. This is what they are sitting like this, right? 90% of people, what they do, they see those saints. When they are meditating, they will do this. We don't, we are blindly following without knowing. Do you know what this mudra means? Chin mudra means, now first let me tell you, saints, they have taken vows before we come into earth, before we take birth, we take certain vows. We sit with the lords of karma who are called the lipikas. We sit with them. They discuss with us that, okay, your syllabus in last lifetime was, you know, the uh, history, geography, maths, you have finished. Now this time you need to study biology. For example, in your last lifetime, you have already developed these aspects of your soul. For example, you have developed the intelligence aspect. So, you know, knowledge, thirst of knowledge will not be your pri priority in this lifetime. Your priority is to develop love aspect. So 
since love aspect you need to develop as a priority so when you are born you will have a spastic baby that spastic baby why you are having because that you have bothered that baby a lot you have harmed and hurt that particular soul a lot so in this lifetime you have to number one serve that soul so when you are a parent when that child is a spastic child you have no choice but to serve you have no choice but to serve that soul number one number two you have no choice but to love unconditionally love that child no matter what that child has physical disability mental disability emotional disability whatever so when you are forced to love your as the soul aspect of love is developing when the soul aspect of love is developing there will be a situation when you will be able to love everyone so no matter how naughty your child is no matter how your child is going on bothering you life you know uh, years after years you uh, the child or the husband or the wife your spouse is is pain in the neck you can't throw them away you still have to okay spouse you can divorce but child you can't divorce a child you have to you are compelled to love why because you have to learn the aspect of the lesson of love in this lifetime i realized it you know when i mean several years after my husband's death i realized why am i a single parent because i have to develop the love aspect the aspect of being a father and a mother both all the qualities of a father all the qualities of a mother all these learnings i have to expertise them master them in this lifetime taking care of two children all alone that was my soul contract that was my vow to the lords of karmas or the lipikas so what the saints and sadhus they take a vow before they come they take a vow of poverty that once they come into earth they do not want to become a raja they do not want to become rich many of the saints they take the uh, you know vow of poverty so that is why when they are uh, they become a saint they beg and they eat they are provided by others they are not providers so the vow of poverty is taken by sadhus as well as the beggars the beggars have taken vows of poverty that is why they are poor you never know even maybe we have taken vows of poverty so you need to break this vow when you break this vow you are free from this vow which the soul has taken you will see rapidly things will change in your life you will be exposed to prosperity you will be exposed to abundance and you will be actually abundance and prosperity will be flowing into your life because you have been able to break that vow and it is possible that is what you know the world pranic means to our school is so beautiful it has given solution to everything in life okay now let me go back to what i was talking so the sadhus have taken number one a vow of poverty number two is to develop their knowledge aspect you know uh, what why do we meditate we meditate because universal knowledge universal uh, you know intelligence it flows into us it is the brahma of course brahma vishnu mahi all the three aspects are coming but majorly you know the enlightenment is to do with illumination illumination is doing with higher consciousness higher consciousness develops why because you get higher knowledge when you get higher knowledge and when you apply that in life it becomes that knowledge is transferred into wisdom wisdom is when you are applying the knowledge that you have acquired with your experience you are applying those right so meditators spiritual practitioners uh, especially sadhus they have taken the vow of enlightenment illumination so they are developing so gyan in hindi you call it gyan chin mudra will what it will do it will drain out all the prosperity abundance energy from the basic chakra you know those who are pranicullers that your prosperity and abundance energy sits on the basic chakra that is the chakra which um, which activates your prosperity aspect or abundance aspect right so it drains out that energy and through all the chakras it takes it up to the crown chakra 
crown chakra you know is the connection to god it is divine heart so your illumination will grow your crown chakra will become very big your basic chakra will become small it will be a inverted triangle opposite triangle where your bottom will be less it will not be a parallel one what we do in pranic healing or pranic healers what we do even to our patients we balance all the chakras so that the light is balanced right here they will have like this the the triangle will be in this shape where they will have lot of gyan lot of illumination all those things will be there but their prosperity abundance physical needs you know materialization will become small and less material needs will become small material manifestations and materialization will become small so if we commoners just by seeing them we imitate and we do chin mudra we are screwing our own life if we are screwing our own life we have no you know um, i mean we can't just blame god that god sabke paas paisa hai to mujhe nahi deta main itna kaam karta hu i'm working so hard but still you are not giving me prosperity kyun what is the reason why are you partial uh, you know towards others and you don't give me are i am breaking all the laws of universe i myself i am breaking all the universal uh, you know laws then how will god help me if you remember i had shared one story earlier i'm repeating that story once again uh, in uttarakhand that uh, uh, if you remember that uh, pandit ji that saint uh, that he was actually the temple he used to look after the temple he was the main priest of the temple and there was so much of rain and the town was being flooded so people were asked to evacuate so people were leaving when they were going they saw this a uh, priest sitting at the temple door they said pandit ji come with us uh, see there is so much of flood people are dying and all so it has been told that we should leave he said no no from the age of 16 till 80 i have served god god will save me and he did not go with them they left then he saw after a few days he saw a, um, a boat you know it was already flooded the whole town was flooded there was like water was flowing like river so in boat these people were leaving they said we are the last survivors of the village we are leaving because we can't survive here and you know pandit ji please come with us he said no i have done so much of seva uh, you know to god uh, so many years god will save me you people go he let them go third last time what happened flood had risen and the temple was covered with water he was sitting on the top of the temple there was a chopper going up the these uh, army people they were looking rescue team was looking for if there is any survivor so they see this man sitting on the temple top and he says we are throwing rope please come up he said no i'm not going to go god will save me i am a um, sevak of god and god will save me you people go and they go and then the flood rises and he dies when he dies he goes to the uh, he goes to heaven and he sees god sitting there very calm and quiet he goes very angry and says god i have served you so many years and you did not save me so god was still quiet not opening his eyes he was even more angry how can you be so calm you are so selfish you can't um, look into the good of people how could you kill me blah 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 then god opens his eyes very calm and he says my son what do you think i will come down to save your life three times i have sent my people to save you three times you have rejected their help who was helping was it them or was it i i had sent sent them to save your life you did not accept it so the thing is that you know another thing that is coming to my mind let me just share god has given us one very very precious thing the most powerful weapon that we have is the will power the ability to choose god gives us situations god gives us opportunities god gives us challenges it's up to us whether we choose it or we reject it what choice are we making do we take it or we give it up for example suppose you have relationship problem with your spouse you think or maybe you are not married with your lover and you think okay this boy is not good or this girl is not good let me just uh, 
you know, break this relation and you get into a re new relation. In that new relation also, you're, uh, you know, you're facing the same problem. In that marriage, in the second marriage also, you're facing the same problem. You say, oh, this man is also bad. You take a third relation. So every new relation you're taking, if you are observant, if you are intelligent, you will see that you are actually facing the same problem. That means what? There is no problem with the man or the other uh, of your partner. It is that you are not learning the lesson that you are supposed to learn. That, le that particular person is giving you pain and suffering because you are supposed to learn. Maybe you're supposed to learn tolerance. Maybe you're supposed to learn patience, but you are not learning. You are impatient, you are rejecting, you are not accepting. Maybe you are supposed to learn um, unconditional acceptance. Maybe you are not uh, learning that. And you think that if you change situations, if you change house after house, if you change you know, relation after relation, you will be free of it. You will never be free of it until and unless you learn the lesson of life. When you learn the lesson of life, only then will God, you know, you will suddenly see all those people have disappeared from your life and you have a stable, long-term, peaceful relation. I'll share my experience. Most of the times I share my experience. I have had, you know, uh, in the past, people cheating me. So, so many times people have cheated. And I used to wonder that, you know, simply I trust people blind. I was very gullible earlier. I used to trust blindly and people used to cheat me. But then one point of time when I came into pranic healing, I realized, and the cheating used to be of very high degree, very, very high degree. Um, you know, four lakh, five lakh uh, rupees, Indian rupees I'm talking about. Blind in the, in the, you know, in the form of helping people that, okay, your family will survive. I'm giving you a loan. And then, uh, you know, um, I'm cheated. Then I realized, no, I need to develop. I need to learn the lesson of discernment. Discernment means what? Knowing what is right, what is wrong. Knowing who is right, who is wrong. To understand the truth. To know the truth. If I do not develop that, then what will happen is accurate perception. My perception should be clear. I should wear clear crystal glass, not colored glass. If I'm wearing that silver or golden glass, even if I'm seeing a, you know, a ghost, I'm seeing like a golden body and thinking it's a good man. I'm just giving an example. So the thing is that whenever you have any challenge, any suffering, any problem in life, sit back and think what is it trying to teach me what is the lesson i have to learn the moment you know what lesson you have to learn you will see that the lesson will disappear from your life and you have gone beyond it you know uh, one thing another thing i remember master has said if you want any person to get away from your life suppose a person you that person is a pain in the neck or the person is troubling you for so many years you don't want that person anymore in your life to bother you or come into your life. You know what you should do? You should always loan him some money. The moment you loan money, if it is a genuine person, that person will still stick on. If the person is not genuine, he will disappear from your life. The moment a person gets loaned, he does not, if he is not a genuine friend, he will not come back to you to give back that money. He will avoid you because he will know that, oh, the moment I meet her, she might ask for the money. So it's a very smart way to judge whether you have the person, you know, people around you are true friends or they are uh, not true friends. So the moment you see, yes, this person is paying off loan, this person is, um, you know, giving me back my money, you will know he is a true friend of yours in life. Okay. So this is, uh, so, you know, without knowing, I'm going back to where I started, without knowing any people advising me anything, write this number on your left side of the body and you will not have COVID, your immunity will go up. You do not know what you are doing, whether it is suiting you or not, whether it is helpful to blindly don't do anything. Have rational, log, ask why, what is the logic behind it? What is, even chanting mantras, as I told you earlier, 
that we chant mantras what happens when we are chanting mantras it is nothing but the sound energies the frequencies of the universe we are tuning into when you are when you are putting on a radio particular 90.5 fm you then only you can tune into that channel and you can hear music when you are tuning into 100.3 for example then you are tuning into a particular channel the frequencies go to that channel and you can hear the interview of someone so each channel you have to tune in to get those vibrations and the frequencies uh, become different so when you are chanting mantras if you want love in your life you chant example and giving chant the mantra of krishna pray to jesus jesus and krishna both are tuning into the energies of love in the universe when you are chanting the mantra of lakshmi what does it bring down it is bringing down abundance and prosperity energy when you are reading the hanuman chalisa what does it bring down it brings devotion energy in you and what can devotion do if you have undoubted uninterrupted devotion just like hanuman you it can you can do miracles you can move the mountains just like hanuman did he brought the entire mountain what does that symbolically mean that means that since he was so devoted that he could also remove he could also remove as big blockage or obstacle as you know um, bringing down a mountain with him you can even remove mountains so the point is when you are uh, do so when you know you we have names for example we are named there is a namkaran right when you are baptized also you are given what is happening this in that in that ceremony that name that is given to you when each person calls you by that name your aura your body is absorbing that energy from the universe suppose your name is example um ganesh so constantly you are absorbing whenever you somebody calls you ganesh 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 you you are absorbing the energy of ganesh ganesh is symbolic representation of removal of obstacles that energy your aura your body is absorbing again live example my name was given by my parents as mondrita the origin is from arabic which means a warrior princess and look at my life those who know my life i have actually been a warrior princess warrior yes definitely constant wars in my life princess yes in like a princess i have been always bold charging forward to face those wars but what happens since everybody has been calling me mondrita Mon that is what i my whole life i have been absorbing so you know i purposely uh, when my friends started calling me mondi as a short form and i looked into the meaning i said oh that's a nice name that's a nice that tunes into cert certain good um, you know uh, frequencies and vibrations okay so i started telling people whenever they ask what's your name i tell them though my name is mondrita but you can call me mondi because now i have started absorbing the other energies which is healing my life so it is very very important for us to know in depth why are we doing certain things the in the in the courtyards in earlier times they used to put the tulsi tulsi and then they would put the diyas the lamp that lamp in the evening after sundown that they would put what does it symbolize the moment sun goes down sun prana is not there sun prana is a protection right it is full of energy the sun prana goes down then when you put the the other men of the house they would go out for work they would come back from work whether it was farmer wood cutter whatever they would come back the moment they would cross that lamp that fire energy would burn out all the stress anger irritation all those energies from their aura so the moment they would walk into the house they would walk in releasing all those stresses tensions worries anxiety 
anger, resentment, whatever. It used to be burnt out by that fire energy. So every ritual that we have had, there is a meaning why we have it. There was a logic. Sanatan Dharm has been there for more than 10,000 years. There is no creator, any particular. Okay, it's the Muslims. There is, they follow what Muhammad has taught. Right? So they have named themselves Muslims. Christians, what Christ has taught, that is what they follow. So they are called Christians. Sikhs, what Guru Nanak has taught, that is what they follow. So they are called uh, uh, Sikhs. Jains, what Mahavir has taught, that is what they are following. So they are called Jains. Where is the source of Hinduism? The source is infinite. You do not know. There is no particular single creator. This is, that is why it's called Sanatan Dharma. It's a lifestyle. It's not a religion. Hinduism is basically a way of life. The rituals that you follow, the way that you follow, ethics, morals, yoga, meditation, all these are lifestyle. Imbibe these, your life will be. You do not need to worship anybody in particular to change things. You just tune into Parabrahman, Supreme God. Supreme God has everything within you. Right? And you follow what is taught. So every ritual that we have, how did the Sindhu come? In the earlier times when there were tribes and there used to be, you know, uh, polygamy, there used to be multiple marriages, multiple relationships. That time, the uh, head of the tribe, the Sardar, what he used to do, the moment he would like a woman, he would say, she belongs to me. I don't want anybody else to have any relation with her. So he would take his knife or his sword and cut her on the you know forehead so that everybody can see. It used to bleed and bleed. It would be a deep wound. It used to bleed, bleed, bleed. And then finally, there would be a scar. So the moment people would see the scar, they would know that, oh, she belongs to the uh, Sardar, to the head of the clan. So they would not even eye upon her, look, uh, look at her. So gradually later on, the people started, women in, in our country started wearing red or orange sindhu, which symbolizes that I belong to somebody. I'm not available. I'm not free. And that is why, mind it, even now, when I dress up well, I still wear sindhu. Because that is what my message to the world is, that I don't belong to, uh, you know, I belong to somebody in special. I am not available. Okay? When you become a widow, the sindhu is, you are told not to wear the sindhu. Why? Because that time, again, you are giving a reflection that I am available, I am free. Right? Similarly, in Rajasthan, they wear those, uh, you know, those uh, iron rings on their leg. What does that symbolize? Even our pile, you know, the, that we wear, it, it represents that, yes, I am belonging to somebody. So every ritual has a meaning, why it is there, why we do these, why uh, people, uh, women during menstrual cycles should not do any work. Everything has meaning. If you know, if you want to know, if you follow those, life will be purified. It will be so cleansed. You will be healed. Even the fasting that we do. Fasting has multiple effects. Cleansing the body, internal organs, internal system. The thorough self-cleansing goes on when you are fasting. This is on the physical level. On the energy level also, it does a lot of cleansing. Right? Number three, in the emotional level and mental level also. You how? You are acquiring self-control. Your mental capacity to control what you desire is developing. Your mental strength, your willpower is developing. So God has given us one free thing absolutely. That is the willpower or the freedom to choose. So suppose you have had a soul contract with somebody that at the age of 15, I'm going to meet you. We will fall in love. We will get married. We will then, you know, you will bother me. You will give me a lot of trouble, a lot of suffering. So all my past negative karmas will be cleansed and neutralized. 
But what happens when you meet that person at the age of 15, by your free will, you do not remember at first, but by your free will, you decide you don't want to get married or you don't want to get into any kind of relationship. So what you have done, that lesson that you were supposed to learn between 15 to 20 years, supposed to, at the age of 15, you would fall in love and the affair would go, to, go on for five years. So in this time period, you were supposed, in those five years, you were supposed to learn that lesson for which you have had a soul contract. You have rejected that. So you have pushed the lesson further. You're not going to learn the lesson, you know, till you get into a relationship. Then what will happen? Will the soul not learn lesson? Of course, the soul will learn lesson. How? Then maybe you will not get somebody as a spouse, but maybe you have you will have you know five clients in your business who will come and you know put you into situations, those situations, those challenges will teach you the same lesson that that one person was teaching you in that relationship or in that relationship. We cannot avoid any learning of the soul. That's why Master says that don't wait for the lords of karma to whip you and teach you the lesson. Before, before you get that whip, you learn it with your intelligence. You understand, perceive, what, what is this suffering trying to teach you? Let me understand. What am I supposed to learn? Learn the lesson. The moment you realize, 50% of the lesson is learned. And the next 50% is easy to learn. The moment you become patient, the moment I, again, this example I've given in the past also, I'm giving again. For some of you, it will be reputation, but maybe you will, because your chakras are developing, you will understand in a higher perspective. Maybe you will have, uh, you know, higher um, intuitions and higher understanding. So uh, when I first started driving, what used to happen, there's all these bicycles and there are bicycles and the scooties and scooters and, you know, all the bikes coming in front of my uh, vehicle. And I used to get so irritated, continuously honking and they would not go. If I go to another road, again, more would come. So, you know, I used to get very, very irritated with that. And I used to keep honking, oh, why are not, they are not moving, oh, poof, poof. that used to happen. Then, you know, gradually I mellowed down. And, you know, the moment I would pass, maybe there was a scooty which I passed, you know, from this side. When it comes to my side, I look at them and I say, you think you are driving a Mercedes, huh? So sweetly I used to say, that you think you are driving a Mercedes, that's why you're not moving. Then I realized this is trying to teach me tolerance. So what I started doing, the moment I used to see them in front of me, what I would do, I would just, you know, with one hand, I have to bless them. I bless you that all of you, you have four wheelers, you have vehicles, you have, you know, trucks, buses, Mercedes, whatever. So I know when they, uh, you know, move, shift from bicycles or scooters to become, becoming owners of uh, four wheelers, they will not come in front of my eyes, uh, in front of my vehicle. So what will happen? Basically, I started sending them positive energy, good energy. So when I started sending them good energy, what happened? My lesson got easier and easier. And then it started disappearing. They started disappearing. I have yet to learn, you know, from this. Because yesterday when I was driving down, I mean, it still continues. Not people coming in front. But what I have noticed yesterday, I realized that when I'm driving, especially on highways, yesterday I drove for around seven hours, uh, you know, in the uh, Goa Bombay Highway. There are incidents which happen, which irritate me. For example, I'll give you a specific incident. Um, you know, there, it is a two-way um, uh, lane. So in between, there is a uh, divider. So in certain areas, one way there is some construction going on. So as we are going from the left side, there are cars coming from the front in our same lane. Correct. So in one lane, we have to fit in uh, both the ways. So I saw from far, there was a truck. Behind the truck, there was a car and there was another truck behind, okay? And I say, see this car, it's trying to overtake that truck and come in front, whereas it's coming from there and I'm going here. So I gave the blinker to let it know that don't take a turn, don't overtake because it's in one lane we are fitting in. But that car did not stop and it tried to overtake and it came in front of me. We would have, I mean, you know, normally, normal circumstances, it could have crashed. 
do i am giving honk i am giving my horn i am also blinking lights uh, you know shooting lights towards that car that don't come don't come still it came i really got irritated i i actually got angry and you know i stopped i passed and i moved when i moved in front of course i know we are divinely shielded protected guarded so there's no fear at all and of course the tau mantra also we keep chanting while driving those who know about the tau mantra so you know but later on i realized that i i'm yet to learn certain lessons of um what to say uh, tolerance mistake is others it's not my mistake but still i have to be patient i have to tolerate especially during driving i have seen this so i have to be you know so this is uh, there was no danger but but the thing is that it was a lesson for me to learn okay so in this way anything that happens in your life you have to be perceptive as to what is it trying to teach you okay so i would like you to close your eyes center yourselves tap your uh, with one hand tap your heart tap your head crown activate your heart chakra and head crown chakra just feel the stillness within go deep inside your mind think of a happy moment of your life think of that moment visualize that you are in you are experiencing that moment again the happiest moment maybe you're feeling very very happy now think of a moment which has given you a lot of peace tranquility bliss feel the peace and tranquility now think for what are the lessons what are the problems in your life that are going on and what are the lessons that you are supposed to learn get in touch with your own inner self ask your own soul give me clear understanding of what is the lesson i'm supposed to learn from all these problems take one problem at a time what am i supposed to learn from this particular problem what is the lesson to be learned from another problem? think about it visualize that be perceptive to be deep deep within as i chant om release all the negative feelings negative emotions all the negative energies that you feel the way you have been affected by these problems and crises release those om let go and release let your mind body your soul be healed with the healing energies of buddha kwanin and shanti mantra of healing and while i am healing pray to your own inner self the god within you to give you a clear understanding of what is the lesson you are supposed to learn om mani padme hum om mani padme hum om mani padme hum om mani padme hum Om Mani Padme Hum. Om Mani Padme Hum. Om Mani Padme Hum. Om Mani Padme Hum. Om Mani Padme Hum.
example, come back to your bodies. Visualize Mother Earth in front of you. Let us pass the excess energy which is overflowing uh, beyond our body. Let us bless all the beings, the living beings, non living beings, all on Mother Earth. May Mother Earth and all the beings be blessed with divine light, love, and power. With peace, with illumination, with mercy, with forgiveness, with generosity, with kindness, with abundance, with prosperity, with support and help, with divine grace, divine mercy, and divine. with materialization of all the dreams, desires, and wishes, with manifestation of everyone's greatness. Bless everyone with harmony, unity, oneness. May everyone's lives be fulfilled completely and permanently on all levels. May Mother Earth be blessed with good water, good air, good earth. May all the fishes and marine life be blessed. May all the animals, insects, plant kingdom, mineral kingdom, animal kingdom, all human kingdom and spiritual kingdom be blessed with divine light, love, and power. May everyone be blessed. Amen. Amen. We can put your hands down, visualize the uh, roots of light going down from the bottom of your spine and the bottom of your feet, going deep, deep, deep down into Mother Earth and healing all the beings on Mother Earth, deep inside Mother Earth. May Mother Earth be deeply healed, regenerated, rejuvenated, and revitalized. May Mother Earth's bleeding heart be healed forever. Blessings be to Mother Earth. Mother Earth, please deeply root me, ground me, and anchor me to you. May I be deeply rooted, connected, and anchored to Mother Earth. Blessings be to Mother Earth. Now let us do the closing prayer. Lord God, thank you for your divine blessings, divine light, love, and power. Thank you for this beautiful session. Every day that we are growing with the energies, knowledge, power of heaven, thank you very much for making me entitled to receive this knowledge, absorb, assimilate, and utilize them in my life. Thank you, God. Thank you in full faith. So be it. So be it. So it is. Om Amen Amen Haste So yes. So Atma Namaste. Thank you for giving me an opportunity to serve. Uh, we will meet.